10th interview her, he on there, since that was 2017, since then he's taken his professional, educational, formal background and just freaked entrepreneurship. Like, took the subject and ran with it. He's retired from the full-time workforce. He might never have to work again if he doesn't want to. He probably could stop working for a decade and still be good between his investments. We own a lot of property together. We own a vending machine route together and a bunch of other great people. Um, he led, he led with service. He led with the, he led people in his investment group like $500 to go buy properties in Detroit. Uh, the dude was a great heart. His wife doesn't have a job. His son will probably never have to have a job. And his grind is so, so cool because he did it the right way. Went all in on what he had going on and now his life's pretty lit. Uh, $3 million of course sales the past year and a half and the, the, the next year is probably going to be even more than that. Everyone should know this guy, buy his book, buy something from him. He's going to have to make some money. Charles, the mogul, Oglesby. <laughs>
get a lot of competition. And so my people that I brought in started kind of creating their own thing. But we still retain a solid foundation under there. Um, what's really cool is we also created a mastermind group. And a lot of the mastermind members are here. You got to raise your hand in the building. Yay, yay. <laughs> and, and so what I'm, what I'm going to tell you guys might sound like get money, get money, because it's the main area presentation. But it's really the add value to a lot of other people presentation. By adding value to a lot of other people, you're going to be able to enrich your life. And so we show up every day, and then we have people, they show up in real life because we're doing a good work. So let's go to the next slide. My most notable moments, I did $60,000 a day in sales. So one day, with the digital product, we made $60,000. No shipping, no storage, no overhead. It's all profit. Our best week in sales was $115,000. Our best month was $250,000. And then also we did $100,000 in a month as a community builder. So on top of that, I wrote a book telling you guys how I did it. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to dig in deep to all these different things. I'm not just here to brag. Like, oh, we did this. It's like, you guys don't get any takeaways. What's the point, right? So we're going to talk about finding your unique lane. I want to tell you guys to release everything. We're going to talk about promoting like your hair is on fire, advertising testimonials and results, Every single day, we're going to show you how to leverage social media. So we're going to walk through Twitter, we're going to walk through Instagram, and those are pretty much my largest platforms. Uh, be willing to be crit criticized. Use scarcity and limited releases. Go all in on what sticks. Leverage larger pages. We're also going to talk about the importance of content, social media content. But that's what we got done further on day recording, because content matters. All right, so does anybody have an idea what a digital product is? Do you guys have a digital product? What's a digital product? Can I get it? What's the definition of a digital product? Something online that you can sell. Yeah. Well, yeah, to a certain extent, because you can sell a lot of things online. So it's something digital, digital that you can sell. That you can sell. Yeah. And we all have a digital product inside of us. Every single one of you guys have a digital product inside of us. So much so that I was having a conversation with Tosin, or Tosin the Wally, me and me not know. And he created a checklist. A checklist. He gave away for free. Within that checklist, he had affiliate links. So people would go to his affiliate link, and then he would get paid for that. You can also put a dollar value in your checklist. Depending on how valuable that checklist is, you can charge $10, $20 for a checklist. You guys might think that $10 and $20 isn't that much money, but it adds up at scale. You literally have access to millions upon millions of people on the internet. And if you get a dollar from each of them, you become a millionaire. It's not that difficult. You don't have to sell high ticket. You don't got to sell $5,000 products, $20,000 products. Little bits at scale will get you to your financial goals. So I created a list. There's so many different things that you can be doing. We have eBooks, of course, the checklist, an e-guide. It doesn't have to be a 200-page book for you to sell it. It can be 50 pages, it can be 20 pages. It doesn't have to be that substantial. As long as you're adding value, the key is adding value. We don't want to just be out there selling snake oil. A digital course, which I think is the most popular these days, you guys have seen all of those. Everybody has a course for the most part. Speaking of everybody, does anybody here have a course? Anybody have a course out here? No course. Tomorrow, the day we're yes. gonna have that tomorrow. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna show you the course. I think it's interesting because last week I kind of was like off to myself. So I get it, I didn't get a chance to hear Andre's presentation. But we're talking about the same things, which in my opinion speaks to how valuable and important it is. If you guys leave here, you don't create something. You did yourself a disservice. You all have a job. You all have real estate. You all have all these other things. It's nothing to create something on top of what already exists. It's nothing. I'll show you how we're going to do that too. Webinars, tickets, membership programs. Something that can be packaged and sold electronically and distributed electronically, which is important in terms of distribution. What is your unique claim? What do you do? He's in, what service are you going to get, sir? Cyber security. Cyber security. Rocket, do you work in? Oh, a job, job. Yeah, like a job, job. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man. oh <laughs> Production, manufacturing. I tell people all the time that if you think that there's no value in what you do, you wouldn't have a job in the first place. They're paying you because you add value. The problem is a lot of us let them capture all the upside. We let them go to the market, market our skills, market our abilities, and capture the upside. 
an example, and I didn't really realize this like I got into a personal or professional space. If you're an attorney and you're billing rate is four hundred dollars an hour, but your salary is two hundred thousand dollars a year, four hundred thousand if you capitalize that one, say annually, what is it? It's a lot of money. It's like four million dollars. It's a lot of money. <laughs> so anyway, basically what I'm saying is that there's a, there's a gap. If you're making $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, usually you're making about, I'm blanking on the, on the math right now. What did you say? $100,000 a year, you're making like what? $100,000 a year, how much per hour? Um, like about 50. 50. 50. It's like 50, 45? Mm -hmm. so, so if you're making twice that, $9 an hour, but they're billing you at $400 an hour, who's getting the 300 you, you are getting <laughs> but you should be, and that's why you got to take your skill set and take it directly to the market. Find something that's unique to you. What do people ask you for advice on? What do people slide in your DMs for? What do people pull you aside at the family union for? What do they ask you like, hey man, I just cashed out my four hundred one k. What should I put my money into? That is a skill set that you should be taking to market. What's your degree in? What did you spend four years and forty fifty thousand dollars in money, sometimes more, in to learn? That gives you an advantage. That is a marketable asset. I tell people that college is like buying your education at wholesale. And you take it and you package it up in retail and you sell it to the market. And most people aren't willing to do that because they're thinking like, you gotta come through me. And for the longest time I thought that was the goal. It's like you had to come through me. You had to participate in what I had going on. And if they didn't, they didn't work with me. And that's a mistake. Because a lot of people will value, value your knowledge, but they won't necessarily want to humble themselves before you. And when you create something that's visual, you put it online, they kind of sneak around the corner and like, get your game without telling you they need your game. And you'll find like the closest people to you need your game, but they'll never tell you that because they don't want to think that you are above them. So you gotta put it out there and they can get that, that game. So like I said, education is like a kilo. I never sold drugs. But people relate to drug terminology for some reason. <laughs> so, you, 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 you go to the education, you get your credentials, you get 80 grand, and then you can mark it up for $95, you can sell it across the world, and a $95 course can create $2 million, $3 million in revenue. And you can still work the job with the education. You never lose the education. You never stop learning either. I told you, you only know what I told you. You don't really know what I know. So you can always give out the game. All right, so these are the things that I created and why are important. We created online courses, membership communities, but there's so much more, um, even in the event. Whatever your mind can conceive, you can then monetize. So we all have ideas. I think the problem is we don't have faith and we have value in those ideas. When I was working a job, I would give them my ideas and I'd show up and they would say, oh, what do you think about this? And they would just shoot them down. And then two weeks later, they'd be stealing my ideas. But now, I take my ideas directly to the market. If it works, it works. We're going to find out the numbers going to tell us if it works or not but I'm able to then monetize what's in my mind. So don't devalue what's in your brain. Don't devalue your ideas. Don't devalue that book that you have mailed in 20 pages that then you can then create a volume two for. You can put stuff out there and refine it. It doesn't have to be the finished product. You can take it to market. Yep. If you look at any major company, Facebook, Apple, have you seen the, the most, the first app, iPhone? It's terrible because it compares to the iPhone now. Terrible, and they are a trillion dollar company releasing inferior products. And all of us sit on inferior products that were unwilling to release. The first Facebook was terrible. If they, it wasn't even called Facebook, it was called the Facebook. The logo was whack, the interface was whack. Trillion dollar company, not that they're a trillion yet, but they're pretty close. So, um, release, create. I would say the, the, port, the ports of digital content, and I talked about this earlier, is I don't like physical products. Because I don't like work. And I don't think any of y'all like work either. I think if you can make a thousand dollars by doing nothing, you would go for it. And that's what you can do with digital courses. We're giving you a gift. We're probably making money right now. I was walking downstairs, it was five o'clock in the morning, sales just going off. Because the internet never closes. The internet is 24 seven, and it has self checkout. You don't gotta hire no staff. You don't gotta ship the inventory. It literally runs itself. And so the programs that we use to do that is Gumroad. Gumroad is a super simple platform. What you do is you just record your video, you upload it to the Gumroad ethos. 
gum road, you create your flyer through Canva, and it just it gives you a landing page so you can go there and can buy it through Apple Pay, through PayPal, you even enter in a credit card. Super simple, free. They don't charge you any fees to set up. It's not like one of those platforms like Teachable or all the other platforms out there where they're like putting a barrier to you. It's actually democratizing uh, e-com and the online learning community. I see people do crazy numbers. Again, we're not taking anything from you, we're giving you a gift. If you don't execute, I guess the onus is on you. But I want to see you guys execute. I want to see you guys create something. So that's why at the end I'm going to have a gift so we can walk you through this. Another thing we use for the online community is a company called LaunchPass. And this connects to Slack. It also connects to uh, Discord. And a lot of us, like I said, there's people out there that want the knowledge you have. I guarantee it, no matter what your knowledge is, if it's on taxes, notary, podcasting, anything. There's people out there that want to collaborate and come together and then you get paid just by creating the group. And then the group grows the group and the group also runs the group in a lot of instances. We do that through launch tasks. At its peak, we had about 5,000 members. Leaders emerge, so you're gonna find people who are gonna step up and be leaders in your organization. Just make sure they sign contracts so they can steal your IT and run with it. That's the, uh, that's the, the hat there. Another thing is a lot of people overcomplicate the whole course creation strategy. So they're thinking, I need to get a videographer, I need to get a tripod, I need to pay for editing, I need a cool digital, whatever. They need Zoom. Who <laughs> 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 do you ever use Zoom? The whole economy was on Zoom last year. What I learned is you create a few slides, you, you hop on Zoom, you record the Zoom to either the cloud or to your hard drive, it's up to you, and then you upload that presentation. And there's value in that. Upload it to Launchpad, upload it to Gumroad, rather. Um, then also some other tools are Eventbrite, which allow you to then create, it's all ideas. We're just monetizing ideas at this point. You say, hey, I want to create an event where I'm going to do a real estate event in my area. I'm going to do a networking event in my area. You create that idea, you put it on an event right, you sell tickets, people come, you make money. Also, Google Docs, please leverage Google Docs as obvious. This isn't like rocket science at this point, but I think that's what kind of makes it so unique. Because a lot of people overcomplicate and they think it has to be complicated. When I created ebooks through Google Docs, went to Canva, dropped a PDF on top of the Canva, and now we've got a whole book that was made thousands of dollars. Um, in terms of the, uh, the groups, we like to do weekly presentations. So we just show up like once a week, but we're doing it more now. We're showing like once a day, Monday through Thursday. We just continue to add value and refine that. And that's how you kind of run a community. You get things to put together, and you just show up, add value, you structure, you have a book club in there, we're doing Q&A, we're bringing in guest speakers, all through my network that I've been able to build through my podcast. So this is really important. And the reason why it's important is because you can't predict the future, we all think we can. Everybody thinks they know what their customer wants. Everybody thinks they know what's the gym, what's the hot product. And the, the truth is we don't know until it starts to sell. And so I tell people to release everything. You probably have a book idea, you have a course idea, you have a community idea, release it all. Don't hold on to it, release it all, release it fast. Release it all, release it fast because you can't really find out what is hot until somebody gives you feedback. You can't get feedback until you release it. And so we have this dynamic where it's like, all right, well, when it's perfect, I'll release it. They never release it, so it can't get perfect. They just do your job. I don't want you to go to the job anymore. I want you guys to have, to have freedom. And so this is what I did. I, I just put a bunch of stuff out there. So you see, I have a vending machine course. I have a REIT course. I have a long distance real estate course. Some of them have done really well. The recent investment course did well, but the other ones, they're kind of just okay, but they still added to my, this whole universe, this whole platform that I created. I told people to sell what the people want, not what you want to sell. A lot of people, they want to sell what they like. They want you to buy what they like. They like pepperoni pizza, they're trying to sell pepperoni pizza. What if the world likes anchovy pizza, but you don't like anchovy pizza? It doesn't matter. You sell the anchovy pizza and buy your own pepperoni pizza. You gotta sell what the world wants and then buy what you want from the results. Again, don't try to predict what people want, what people want and what they'll be drawn to. One of the cool things about releasing everything is you'll get people who will buy everything you release. 
That's the craziest thing to me. Because when people like your teaching style, when they want to be involved with what you have going on, they're going to buy everything. So if you're not releasing it, they can't buy it. So you've got to go ahead and put as much into the world as you can. This is the hack. And most people don't do this because they don't want to seem desperate. They don't want to seem like they want your money. They don't want to seem like they're broke. They don't want to seem like the job ain't paying them enough. But a lot of us are broke and the jobs aren't paying us enough. We're just hiding behind fancy clothes. We're just hiding behind leases. You have to humble yourself to the market and promote like crazy. Before I left the workforce, I worked for a law firm, a personal injury law firm. Personal injury law firms are known for advertising. And this guy was an advertiser holic. And he also had one of the largest law firms in Los Angeles. He also has a partnership with the Lakers. He also was one of the big reasons why LeBron James came to LA. Part of it. Krisha Magic Johnson took part as well. But he promoted like crazy, relentlessly. They made fun of him. They laughed at him. They said, oh, his commercials are always on TV. His billboards are always up. All these different things. And he's just running it up. He bought one house in Beverly Hills. Next year, he bought a bigger house in Beverly Hills. A really nice house in Beverly Hills. And what I took from that is, whenever I'm in a job, I study the boss. I'm studying my peers. I don't really care what my peers are doing. I don't even like going to lunch with my peers. I'm studying the boss. What is the boss doing? How do you get to boss levels? And how is he staying at boss levels? And I adopted that. I was promoting like 10 times a day. I was annoying people. They hated it. But you know what happened? My following grew exponentially. Because what you guys probably know, what I didn't know at the time, is that people actually respect folks who put themselves out there. People respect people that have products. People respect people that are looking to add value and sell to the market. My following went from 30,000 to 140,000 on Instagram because I stopped worrying about offending people and I started worrying about taking care of my son. About a year and a half ago, I had a son. Everything changed. I didn't care what the world thought. I didn't care what anybody thought anymore. There are people that I look up to that are killing in real estate, killing in the business, and I stopped caring what they thought because they weren't paying my bills. They didn't get me to where I needed to go despite me even having connections with them, being on my podcast, all these different things. I was over here holding back so I didn't want to like do too much. Even some of them might have mocked what I was doing. They were like, oh, I'm not selling the course for $97. They were mocking what I was doing. But my pockets was ringing. <laughs> Everybody's life has changed around me because I had to get the people who weren't adding value. And in turn, again, I gained 90,000 followers. 50,000, I think I don't know that. 50,000, 90,000, anyway, I don't know that, I promise. So anyway, go crazy on social media. Promote, advertise, run sales, the world needs to know. A lot of people think that you can oversaturate Instagram, but the way that the algorithms work, it spaces it out for you. But the cool thing about the algorithms, is if you post stuff on Instagram, you're always at the top. Whenever anybody goes on Instagram, they're gonna see you. Whenever anybody goes on Twitter, they're gonna see you. So you might think that you're doing too much, but they have ways to space it out and make it so that it flows. As you're promoting your course and your content, it's important to also talk about how it's worked and benefited the lives of others. It doesn't matter if it's helped you. Like Andre was talking about, name your course. My course was how to make twenty thousand dollars. How to make twenty thousand dollars trading options. It wasn't how to get rich trading options. It was how to retire yourself trading options. It was how to earn $20,000 trading, uh, trading options, how I did. And I started getting emails and DMs all the time. I was walking downstairs just today and somebody, or yesterday, and somebody stopped me like, hey, Todd, you changed my life, blah, blah, blah. And I get that all the time. And you know what I do? I capture it and I record it. You have to be intentional about advertising how your, how your products are impacting others. That is going to be one of the biggest ways to sell. So it's a combination of promoting and also matching your testimonials and your results. Because people want to see that there's social proof there. People want to see that if they take this, they can get the same results. And a lot of people have. It was overwhelming. We have people who were making 300 bucks, making another 300 bucks. People have made crazy money off of the content. And all I did was charge $97. And I continue to keep the price at $97, even though they were making thousands. Because my goal is to sell to everybody. A lot of people, if they were getting those results, they're hiking up the high ticket. They're like, this is a $2,000 offer, $5,000 offer. The problem is, most folks don't have $5,000. I'm not trying to sell to the elite of the elite. I'm trying to sell to everybody. 
When I was working in financial advising, I left college, degree in finance, worked at Edward Jones, I think tell the story. Worked at Edward Jones, and I noticed that my customers weren't my people, and I didn't like that too much. I did that for some time. I went and I worked for Chase Property Client as a property client banker. People had $40 million in assets or better. Again, my customers were not my people. And you know who didn't care? The firm didn't care. They didn't care if I was serving my people or not. But I cared. And so that's what we created the investment club, and we brought things down to a level where everybody could participate and we could focus more so on growing wealth instead of just keeping the rich rich. So that's what we keep the courses affordable. But also, would you rather sell to 10% of the population or 100% of the population? Because if they're a high ticket, they can still afford low ticket. If you have $5,000 in cash, you can pay $100. If you have $500, you can pay $100. I would rather my market be so vast, even if it seems like I'm taking a loss, but I'm not really taking a loss, so that then I can capture the whole market, and I can market to the whole market, and I can earn money from the whole market. We're gonna talk about leveraging social media. Social media is the biggest hack. But I'm just gonna skip right to showing you how to use Twitter, how I use Twitter. So the true power of Twitter is the retweet. You get to borrow somebody else's audience. So the goal is to tweet things that get retweeted. The goal is to create alliances on Twitter. The goal is to do things that are gonna get you seen. I like to be kind of controversial. I don't do it on person, purpose. I think I'm just controversial in general. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I like to be controversial because I think that that it gets the engagement. If you ever see a viral tweet or a viral post, usually it's viral because there's intense debate on both sides. If everybody agrees, it's probably not gonna go viral. But when you have people saying, well, I think you shouldn't rent. I think you should buy. I think you should do this. Then you're gonna get that, that energy, the, the vicious debate going back and forth, and that's gonna push your post to the top. It's also gonna increase your, uh, increase your following. Another thing is, um, present contradictions sometimes. So I'll, I'll tweet something about like Gucci and talking about like buying a house and you can't buy a house because of Gucci. And people get mad like, oh, I like Gucci, I deserve Gucci. And that'll kind of write your Twitter up as well. Automate your tweets, there's a lot of platforms out there. I don't do this, my VA does this, and your VA will know how to automate tweets. But automate your tweets. I have tweets that run at like two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm asleep, so I'm still getting sales while I'm asleep. I'm still getting a sleeping bag, as we call it. And then also connect with other powerful pages. Instagram is a huge tool. I think we make most of our money off of Instagram. Please tell me you guys have an Instagram page. If you have an Instagram page, can you raise your hand? Yeah, that's okay. I was in Atlanta, like 10% of the room had an Instagram. If, you're, if you do have an Instagram page, is it a business Instagram page? Are you promoting what you do? And are you seeing results from that? No? I suck at Instagram. So I think that Instagram, I think sometimes people kind of overcomplicate it and make it more difficult. They think it has to be fancy and perfect because that's what you see on Instagram, right? You see the girls with the angles, with the filters, getting likes. <laughs> But you don't have to do that. You just gotta present value. I think some people, that's what they value. If they aren't married, that's what they're chasing. But there's people out there who have real problems and need real solutions, and you have the solutions to that. And so I show up every single day looking to drop gems, to add value, to answer questions, to give current events, to do all these things. All of those are social media content. All of those are gonna grow your following. You just have to post it. Most people don't post it. They want it to be cropped perfectly. They want it to be like this. I put it stuff that was like miscued and it still has the ability to go viral with a bunch of likes. It'll be the things that you didn't expect would go, would go viral that will go viral. You gotta post, I say 10 times a day, but the slide say five. But I think 10 times a day is a good way to get you started. Invest in quality content. I invest in quality content. I pay a few people about $500 a month to get me graphics. I'm actually paying a lot more now. I pay a young man, thousand dollars a week to get me graphics. Why? Because it pays off. If I pay my thousand dollars and make twenty thousand a week, I think that's a worthy investment. From Instagram. From Instagram, yeah. Also, Canva is huge. So, through Instagram, you can leverage a lot of, uh, Canva's gonna be able to help you get that polished presence on, on uh, social media. One thing, one hack 
is I like to use a logo, not my face. Because I want to sell what we do, not who I am. Because maybe they don't like, maybe my nose is too big. Maybe they don't like a fade, maybe they don't like a beard. I don't want people to be connected to me, I want them to be connected to my products. And I think a lot of people who don't have Instagram, or maybe they do, they don't post as much, is because they only want to put themselves out there, and you don't have to put yourself out there, you put your brand out there. And that's one of the things that I noticed. There's a company, his name is Pure Tropics. Huge following, million dollars in income, he never puts his face up there. It's all business. And we can all do that. I think that's something that we don't take advantage of enough. Then also shareable content, so education, information, um, inspiration, things like that are gonna get you shared and likes. Another thing is invest in professional photos. They aren't that expensive, but they're gonna make it look like a million dollars. I pay my photographer like a hundred bucks a shoot, and she gives me a good 50 pictures, and I run them on ads, I run up to my posts, and it increases my, my brand, because people can tell if you have an iPhone camera picture. They can tell. And they don't want to invest in the business with an iPhone camera picture. So pay a little bit of money. That might seem like a contradiction, but like as your brand grows, invest in quality picks. Um, also, like consistent branding in your attire. You're a brand now. You're not just some person selling stuff. You are a brand. So I show up at Navy suit everywhere I go. And people know me for that. I was in Atlanta, somebody was like, oh, I knew that was you because I saw the Navy suit. So you got to be consistent in your attire. Steve Jobs, Zuckerberg's, all the billionaires. Chase what they're doing, not what your friends are doing. They might have the newest, hottest Gucci's, but they ain't trying to build a billion, they aren't trying to build a billion dollar company. So you got to be consistent in your attire as well. Position yourself as an authority, and I think one of the most important things is to highlight others. A lot of people want their Instagram to be about them. And I found that you get a lot of value when you just highlight the success of others. And that's actually something I learned from Erica. Is you see Erica, it's always other people, other people, other people, other people. It's never her, 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 her. And that's why she's successful. And so I was like, you know what, do what successful people do. You see my Instagram, it's a picture right here. Corporate lawyer Sierra Wilson replacing her income. I post like that all the time because people don't care about me. They care about them. So I got to show people who look like them. They don't care, you know, we hop on a plane, like that's your personal page. I have a personal page, I have a business page. Keep the personal stuff personal, keep the business stuff business, and the business should be about the world, not about yourself. When we first launched our course, I got slandered like crazy. It was bad. The reviews were not five-star reviews, but you know what happened is they taught me how to get five-star reviews. I think Andre spoke to this a little bit, but I do a little bit different. I just put it out there. And angry folks are gonna say, you didn't teach me how to set up Robin Hood. You didn't teach me how to open and close a trade. You didn't teach me how to do this, this, this. And sometimes when you create content, you're such a high-level thinker, that you're thinking past all that. You're not thinking of the fundamentals, you're thinking of the meat. You're like, okay, how do you really do this once you get past the fundamentals? But your people still need that. So then you circle back and you record video two. And that's what I did. Video two is all the stuff that they asked. It's literally, you asked, you did. You asked, you did. And they led me to that place. This is here because a lot of people, they're releasing because they don't want those angry emails. They're holding on to because they don't want people to talk to them crazy. They're holding on to because they don't want people to ask for a refund. Sometimes you gotta get refunds, but you gotta be focused on the big goal. When I put my stuff out there and I got a bunch of criticism, we only made like $100,000. All that actual particular feedback that the market really wants, not just what I think the market wants. Again, it's the same thing. Put it out there, the market's gonna tell you what they want. So we're talking about releasing everything, and once you do release it, all up on that feedback. We went from $100,000 in sales to $3 million in sales, and we're still ringing the register as we speak. Where my phone is. So listen to your customers. Criticism is a sign that you're getting noticed. I never knew who hated me until I got some success. You just hang around a bunch of undercover haters. And you're wondering why they're not helping you, because it's haters. So you gotta get out there, you gotta put yourself out there so you can get them to show their head. Because otherwise they're gonna just, just be sitting on their hands. You're like, well, why aren't you helping you I do is not gonna know some haters. And you're not gonna realize that until you get some success. So when you do get that success, you can't take it personal. Because the most people who are the, the people who are the most vocal sometimes aren't being the most objective and the most unbiased. Sometimes they just want to bring you down. They just want to bring the sales down. So you can't focus on that even when you do get it. But you've got to be willing to run to it. 
Criticism is a sign that you're actually succeeding, not the opposite. One of the things we did is we used scarcity. So a digital product system is not built in scarcity because it's unlimited. Literally, the product duplicates itself over, 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 over. You gotta create some artificial scarcity. So if you've seen those people who have gone online and they do a product drop, they make a million dollars in a minute, or a million dollars in 10 minutes, a million dollars in an hour, it's because you can only buy so much. People are gonna rush to what's limited, even if the price is the same. So what we do is we run sales, we say this price is only here for the next 50 people. And then what I do is I do a countdown. 22 left, 10 left, nine left. And the reason why I do this is it bumps this thing to the top of your Twitter feed. Not just this tweet, the whole tweet. And so people are like, oh, I gotta get this price before it's gone. And that's one of the things that I've seen that's worked. Running sales, constantly promoting sales, sales, sales is gonna help you. We're in the business of sales, but folks don't wanna run sales. They're like, I'm not giving you a discount on my course, I'm not doing whatever. But it's built in, it's 100% profit with, with digital courses. We talked about this, so I'm gonna just kind of breeze past this. But once you find out what works, go all in, promote, promote, promote. This is a hack, really, really big hack. This took my page to the next level. And I don't know if you guys are using this. Anybody here do social media marketing through their Instagram or Facebook? All right. You still making success? We're gonna work, I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna give you my phone. Okay. She's doing social media marketing. This is huge. This is huge because you can only do so much organically, especially if you're just starting out on Instagram and you only have 1,000 followers. You can leverage larger pages. And because we're in this, what I call black world renaissance, we're all looking to help each other. And so their, their rates aren't what you would normally be paying to get advertising. If you were to advertise through TV, through radio, through print, it's gonna tax you. People are going to the debt trying to get that stuff. I don't even know what you cost, I have to look. But you can get on some of these pages for $75. You can get on this page for one point in time, like $125. And there's other pages that have, they'll, they'll, they'll do marketing for you for like $30, 50 bucks. But what's interesting is they have 520 followers, 520 eyeballs, or how many people? And then you also have 920 followers right here, 920 people from an official Black Wall Street that you get access to for $125. The ROI is insane. They call it return on ad spend. The return on ad spend is insane. So much so, I actually felt bad just giving them. I said, just be an affiliate. Because I don't feel like I should be able to make $10,000 off of a $125 post. But you can, and you, it's still there. Because social media is where the people are. You gotta go where the people are. Why is this whole ad so expensive? Because that's where the people are. Why are billboards expensive on certain roads? Because that's where the people are. So we're able to hack into this system before they figure it out, before they figure out that they can uh, shut us down and throttle us down, or algorithm us out, ghost bandits, whatever they wanna call it. That is a hack. That's, that's a big part of the reason why we're able to take that, that page from 30 to 140. Because we're leveraging larger pages. And so what you wanna do is you wanna tell them in that caption, follow me. Click the link in the bio. People are gonna do what you tell them to do, so you have to instruct your audience. Well, we're getting to the end, which is cool. Um, content is cash these days. But more specifically, content is a commercial. We do podcasts. I have two podcasts, The Old and Scott Show. Anybody ever heard of The Old and Scott Show? Yes. Look at that, man. Rich and massive. We also have the Tweet Talk Podcast. Raphael's in the building with the Tweet Talk Show. Yeah. We just crossed 100 episodes on Tweet Talk. We're getting near 200 episodes on The uh, Old and Scott Show. The reason why we do the podcast well, actually, the reason why I did it, I just wanted to educate my people. They have bigger pockets out there that educate their people. I needed something that I could do to specifically educate my people. But I didn't realize there were so many other derivative aspects of podcasting that I just kind of fell into. Networking is the first one. When you do a podcast, usually your guest becomes your friend for life. And usually you're interviewing people that you want to be like. So now you have people that you want to be like who are your friends, who are following you, who are supporting what you have going on, who are going to your page willing to support other things you might be doing. Podcasting is one of the biggest networking apps because people are honored to go on your podcast. I was surprised at first. Like people ask me all the time, like you do my podcast? Cool, I'll call all the time. I did the podcast, a live podcast, that's what I'm trying to take my brand to. 
in Atlanta last week, I had people flying in to be a part of the podcast. A, a brother who made like $400,000 in like six months came all the way from Ohio to be on the podcast because they want that exposure as well. You're giving them a platform. They want to participate in that. Somebody else is going from New Jersey. And so there's a true value in giving. I talked about this last time, but you have to give first. There's always a give relationship first. It's never a take. Takers get ignored. And so I think Andre was talking about how, how do you get people that you can kind of intern with? And the answer is you give value to them. Me and Andre are friends today because I gave value to Andre. When I first saw Andre, I saw what he was posting, I was super inspired because he was talking my language, he started real estate investing, talking business. And so you know what I did? I just started promoting his book for free. I posted on my, on my page, I posted on my Twitter. I was just trying to help him out, not because I wanted anything from him, just because he was a cool dude promoting a message I agreed with. In turn, we're friends four years later. So add value to serve. Um, educating is selling as well. A lot of people don't want to give away the game. They're like, this is my knowledge, I'm not giving it, giving it to you. I paid 50 grand for this kilo, I'm gonna keep my kilo. And that is a mistake because when you're educating your market, you're actually selling to your market. I learned this from Rashonda Scott, who's a real estate agent, which is definitely right there. And she told me that she just shows up and she teaches people about the home buying process. She teaches people about different loans that are out there. She teaches people about different strategies in real estate investing. And in turn, she's one of the top real estate agents in real estate brokers, rather, in Chicago. Um, foster your audience by giving value. So I'm always looking for other people to get more out of what I'm doing than I get out of it. It's always that value exchange. So even when we're pricing products, if it's a thousand dollar potential profit for them, I'm selling to you for a fraction of the price. I'm selling to you for a hundred bucks. But if they're gonna do that transaction all day, if I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars and you only gotta give me a hundred bucks, how fast are you gonna give me that hundred bucks? Exactly. And so the thing is, is it's not a cash for cash, it's a cash for value exchange. I'm giving you value, you give me cash. I talked about, in the beginning of my brand, I did a bunch of uh, blogs, and I was just writing a blog per day. I was studying the Gary Bees, the Grant Cardone, and I started writing a blog every single day. And so I started doing that, and then in doing that, my blog turned into a book, my book turned into different posts. All those things can be repurposed. So with content, you can repurpose it. That video that we're recording right now is gonna be turned into like 10 posts. And all those posts are gonna reach different people. I'm gonna put it on TikTok, I'm gonna put it on Reels, I'll put it on uh, Twitter, that will be on uh, Instagram. And all that is gonna add value to the brand because you can repurpose content. So you always have to be creating content. The podcast we created last night. We were up at midnight recording a podcast because we know the power of the content. So your job in a lot of ways is to be a media company these days. Not to be uh, a lawyer per se, not to be a real estate agent, not to be an accountant. Your responsibility is to be a media company. YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, you need to be always showing up for your audience. And when you show up for your audience, they'll show up for you. Second to last slide says that if you learn digital marketing, you're gonna touch so much wealth. There's billions of people on the internet. You only need a fraction of those people. You don't need them all. You don't need them all. So you have to get your message out to them. And the great thing about it is it costs us nothing. It costs us time. And we all have time. So don't sleep on that. I have a gift. I wrote the book, and what's cool is that the book also comes with an audio book, so if you don't like to read, you can listen to it. The person that I have reading the book to you is a brother that I've Donald the Voice, who has a very smooth voice. Um, and I'm going to give it to you guys for free. All you have to do is go to milliondollarbook.net and type in the code DC, and you'll get the book. And you'll also get the audio book. And you'll also get the slides from the presentation. So, more you're going to get the notes, the slides will be there as well. Thank you. Where did you go? Any questions, Donald? Sorry, what did you say? The, the discount code is DC. D like dog, C like Charlie. That was a Charlie. All right. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, so, um, Gumroad uh, is it's the particular uh, help section. So, Gumroad is what you utilize to 
uh, create those, um, or where you settle your courses on after you've made your reporting. Yes. Uh, within that, um, do, do you think it's, you know, I do a database management and I have some business intelligence there too, so there are different products that I utilize that I can be, that can be taught. I think it's smarter to utilize uh, or to create just one series of videos or create different videos relating specifically to what I utilize. Are they all on the same topic? Or can you break them out into different? You can break them out into different. They, they work uh, They work together, but they can be used separately. You do not have to go one to necessarily one to your stuff. So, kind of, I'm not sure I'm hearing the question correctly. So, uh, sorry. So uh, let's say, for example, you're going to create a course, right? Yes. And the course is going to be on what? Uh, it's going to be on databases, how to program databases. Yeah, and that's one topic. Use. That's it. Yes. That's, 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 one, that's one course. But then you have to break it up into modules. OK. It's lot, don't just do one big chunky video. OK. It yes. doesn't translate well. Most people won't watch the whole thing. So break it up into modules, especially something as complicated as that. Right. You want to break that up, whatever that looks like, outline it before you even start recording it. OK. And then just lay it out like that. So I've never done that, but I know somebody who did, and she went through Fiverr for it, and it was an, an awesome outline. I'm pretty sure it wasn't that expensive because it was on Fiverr. So just an employee professional. These days, I'm really big on leveraging people who do this for a living. So instead of you going out there and trying to fumble around and do it, go on Fiverr. Yeah. Or if you, even if you know somebody who has, one, one thing that a lot of us do is in creating our own course, sometimes we look at other people's courses. So I'll buy your course to see how you structured it, even if it's on something unrelated, so I can get ideas. A lot of these are really affordable courses, and so you can just kind of get that, um, what, do they call, what do you call it, but yeah, go buy other people's courses, and that, that'll give you some insight, and also just hire somebody. Which one's 
and leverage first. So for you, Charles, at what point did you recognize, hmm, now it's time to leverage systems? And at what point did you recognize, hmm, now I need to build a team? That's a good question. I never really <laughs> actually thought of when I did that. I think I did it when it made sense financially. That was part of the time. But also, when it was so much that I couldn't do it myself, I think systems stay one. You need systems now. Like systems don't come later, systems come now. So put those systems in place, the automations, the email autoresponder, all those different things, put those in place now so that you already have a system for your team to walk into. Because you don't want to have a team come in and you're trying to like coach them. That's a recipe for wasted money. Because they're gonna still show up and bill you. They might not be productive, but they're still gonna show up and expect to be paid for the time. So do the systems, invest in the system, and then your systems can always evolve. So just because you create something now doesn't mean that's it, that's static. You're gonna improve, you're gonna see what you need to add. I would say systems start now, people want to make sense financially. That's a good question. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.